Okay, so just to kind of talk about control and data planes in practice a little bit, I want to show you a few more pictures. Uh, this is a picture of another uh, chassis of a router. It's a little bit bigger. Um, so if you have a large router, these are typically built in modular fashions uh, with slotted chassis. So the idea here behind slotted chassis is you have a set of line cards and you can kind of remove these line cards and put them in. Um, and each of these line cards has a different function. So you can see some of the line cards have ports where you can plug in cables. Um, there's also line cards where you have the router processor. The route processor is also on a line card. Um, so in general, you have different line cards with different purposes and you can remove them or add them as needed. And they're hot swappable. So you can leave the router on while you do this and kind of remove line cards. You can hot swap them without taking down the rest of the router. So another issue you need to deal with when you work with control planes is figuring out what protocols to run in the first place. So you have a device, you know, you set up your device, you got to figure out what you want that device to do. And then there's different protocols you can choose to accomplish that goal. So I wanted to kind of list out a bunch of goals that we often have for devices and then give you some names of specific protocols you can look into when you want to accomplish those goals. So first of all, if you want your device to do routing, some very common routing protocols for this are OSPF and ISIS. Those are protocols used within ISP boundaries. If you're routing outside of your network, you're going to use BGP. So these are protocols that you can go into your device and you can configure to achieve those sorts of objectives. If you want to do multicast, there's protocols for this. There's protocols that can kind of set up multicast trees. If you have a bunch of traffic coming into your router and you want to disseminate it out, you can look at protocols like PIMSM. That's a very commonly used one. There's DVMRP, PIMDM, and so on. So these are protocols where, you know, if you have a network and maybe you're, you know, disseminating video content to a lot of different sources, you can send that content out individually to each of those sources, but that can waste your network bandwidth. What you can do with multicast is you can send out one copy and your routers will kind of automatically create a peer-to-peer -peer network and disseminate that traffic out. So if you ever encounter that problem, you can look at multicast for that. Another set of protocols to keep in mind are uh, protocols for VPN and tunneling. If you have kind of these IoT devices set up in your networks and you want to have secure connections up into the cloud, it's smart to encrypt those connections. And there's a bunch of protocols that are great for that sort of thing. There's GRE, MPLS, VXLAN, L2TP. What these protocols do is they take your data and they encapsulate it, sometimes using encryption or sometimes allowing you to tunnel the traffic over different layers. Like for example, if you have two networks and they're layer two, and they're separated over a layer three network, maybe over a wide distance, but you want them to kind of virtually act like a layer two network, then you can use L2TP. It's a layer two tunneling protocol where you can connect them together. So that's another good set of protocols to keep in mind. There's also protocols for forwarding. So we use IPv4 a lot. There's also IPv6. And these are protocols that are used to construct packets at layer three. There's spanning tree protocols. So we talked about the spanning tree protocol in Ethernet, how you can kind of create a spanning tree on your network topology. There's variants of the spanning tree protocol that converge faster or kind of create more resilient spanning trees like RSTP and PVRSTP plus and so on. So when you set up a network, if you're not sure what to use, you can just use STP. But if all your devices support it, you can consider these other protocols as well because they can provide more resilient spanning trees that converge faster after failures. For wireless networks, there's different versions of wireless protocols that you can consider. And these often have enhanced levels of speed. Um, they can use various sorts of uh, beam forming technologies to kind of forward, you know, send traffic to certain locations of your network and, you know, aggregate your beam in certain areas that can provide additional bandwidth. There's also protocols for router failover. So if you ever encounter a situation where you have a router and it's a really important router. Maybe it's providing an upstream internet connection for your entire network. And you're thinking, man, if this router fails, my whole network's going to go offline. You should consider these protocols like HSRP and VRRP and GSRP. What these protocols can do is they can do something really cool. They can, you can set up your router and configure it. Then you can configure a standby router. And you can tell that standby router, you know, just be a mirror of this original router. Just be a mirror of it and sit there. And if this router fails, you take over. So you can configure your routers like that. And HSRP and these other protocols will kind of send pings and say, you know, are you alive? Are you alive? And if, you have, if that router ever fails, the other one will seamlessly take over. So it kind of deals with automating your configuration and your failover. So those protocols are good to know about. 
Um, some other widely used protocols, there's also link failover. So if you have a router is connected to another router over a link and you're thinking, man, it would be bad if that link fails, we can actually set up multiple links between those pairs of routers. And then you can configure LACP or port channel to kind of tell those routers, you know, these are two links, but use this one as a backup for this one in case this one ever fails. You could also load balance your traffic over them. You can kind of create a virtual link, which comprises of multiple physical links. So if you have three one gig links, you can tell it to pretend that's one three gig link. So you can get additional bandwidth that way as well. There's also a lot of protocols associated with quality of service. So if you ever have a situation where you have a, a device that's sending data and that data is very important, but it's getting congested and getting dropped, and you want to give it better quality of service, then you can consider these protocols like COS, DSCP. There's different protocols that can kind of drop packets in different orders or provide better customer service, better quality of service to certain packets. There's also protocols for administration of routers. If you want to log into a router and administer it, there's SSH and Telnet and things like that. So these are some protocols to keep in mind. These are all very widely used protocols that are used in the control plane of devices.